Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an incredible day. Now today guys, I'm going to be potting on my two Lofafora Williamsii cacti that I have had for many, many years. And uh, these incredible cactus plants are very wacky and unusual. And they're banned in certain parts of some countries, including the US, in many different states, because um, they contain a mescaloid, um, sorry, an alkaloid called mescaline that has drug-like hallucinogenic effects and people have misused it in the past and because of that it, it's banned but we're lucky here in Ireland and the UK it's perfectly legal to grow I think it's a beautiful beautiful cactus instead of having spines it has little woolly tufts that come out of the areoles and it's really wacky and unusual beautiful to grow lovely little pink flowers and um, this does need, desperately need to repot. The roots aren't coming through the pockets or anything like that. But because it's been in the same soil all summer, um, it needs to be repotted. And because of the time of year now, it's sort of fall time, autumn time. Normally the best time to repot a cactus is spring and summer when it's actively growing. So I'm gonna repot this and keep it dry, probably now until the following spring when I'll start to water it as normal. But a bit of fresh soil will be good. And um, although it's a bit late in the year to repot this type of cactus, better late than never. Now, by the way, guys, if you're new to growing cacti, then do check out a video I've made a few years ago now on how to um, repot a cactus. And I show two different examples in that, um, one sort of tall cactus and one round bowel cactus. And um, check that out because um, it will help you out if you're new to um, repotting cacti and growing cacti in general. This one's a very easy one to repot. No spines, very soft, so it's easy for me. And um, I'll show you also, I make my own cactus mix and I'm going to show you what I've done here. And um, I just want to say a little bit of a thank you. I've got, <laughs> this is actually a um, apron that was gifted to me probably about two years ago now by my wonderful friend Robert, Robert Garcia. Um, and he very kindly had this printed for me. And as you can see, Desert Plants of Avalon. It's absolutely fantastic. So I want to sort of give him a little bit of a shout out. So thank you, Robert. It is amazing. And Robert is on Facebook and he has a wonderful cactus uh, Facebook page called um, Cactus Haven. So do check it out, guys. Um, and I'll put the links down below to Robert's Facebook page in the um, about on this video section down below in the description. Do go over and give his page a like. So um, thank you, Robert, again. <laughs> and um, let's get going on with repotting these plants. Now I'm just going to move the camera down to um, show you repotting or unpotting and repotting these two um, Lophophoras. There we go. You see that you can see there. Yep. <coughs> now. As I say, I've made, made my own cactus mix and what I like to do is I like to use a loam-based soil with a bit of extra perlite or grit um, and a bit of extra horticultural sand. Now the loam-based soil I like to use is actually you know, a John Inns, it's called John Innes uh, number two. They do one, two and three. In this case I'm using number two, but you can use any loam-based soil. And I add extra perlite or, or grit Sometimes I prefer to use grit, but because it's not always easy to walk back with from the garden centre, I use perlite as a substitute, does the same thing, and I use a bit of extra horticultural sand. Now, if you want to know how to make your own cactus and succulent soil, it's far more economical, and you know what's going into it, then links up above to a video on how to make your own cactus and succulent soil in three easy steps. It's a video I've made on what I use to make my cactus soil, and this is what I've used here, but I've replaced the grit with perlite light in this case but other than that everything else is the same and what I'm going to be doing here give it all a good mix <coughs> and um, now I'm going to take this one out first now this cactus this um, this lot of four Williams I should say when I first bought it was absolutely tiny it was actually the size I'll just show you one of these little baby ones here this is one I grew from seed it was that size when I first bought it and I bought it from a town in in England called Glastonbury which um, it's sort of known for its new age hippiness. It was a little cactus shop there and um, I loved it and I got it from a guy who grew it himself from seed. But that must have been probably 25 years ago and as you can see it, it has grown in that time but 25 years is a long time for it just to have grown that much. Um, just take that out, possibly could be a little seed pod there. Um, so it's a very slow growing cactus. But it's very wonderful and I love its uniqueness and wackiness. It grows into a big, huge tuber, which I'm going to show you. Now, when I come to repotting this now, I'm just going to gently loosen the, um, loosen up the pot. It's much easier when you have plastic than clay. 
I do actually love to use clay pots with usually with Lophophora type of cacti because they they have a tuberous root which is very rot prone. So with rot prone cacti, it's always probably best if you, especially if you are new to growing cacti to maybe have a clay pot because it dries out quicker. But I'm very experienced with growing these type of cacti now, so I'm fine with plastic pots. I uh, know when not to overwater and everything. So what you want to do is just gently squeeze that to loosen it up, turn it upside down, turn it to the old soil there. And this is, I say, is still in damp soil. I want to dry it out for the winter, but it should be okay. Um, now that's all the fresh soil. I'm going to turn that aside because that's all good soil. This is all uh, the older soil. Now, whenever I repot a cactus, I always like to check the root system over to check there's no signs of mealybugs or any other pests hiding in the roots. And I also like to check, especially with Lophophora cacti, that there's no signs of rot. They're very rot prone and because they do have a huge tuberous root, which is this here, that can sometimes get infection and um, rot. So that's something you have to be careful. Also, mealybug can hide out. And it's very hard to see on Lophophora cacti because they already have these woolly sort of tufts. And mealybug do like to form their little nests in little woolly white nests. So um, I always find Lophophora are very prone to mealybug, as is things like Mammillaria cacti that also has the very woolly white areoles. They're sort of hiding there. As I say, this is great. There's no signs of any hidden pests here. Now I'm going to gently just remove the soil around here just to make sure that the neck of the... Um, of this Lophophora. This is its pups. This is the orig original um, Lophophora here and this is the pups it's produced since. And it's natural like some people would panic when they're, they're new to cacti, especially growing these cacti. They'd look and see brown underneath and they'd think it's rotting. But that's normal. That's not natural corkiness with cacti. When cacti age they form brown, um, especially in barrel type of round cacti like these. They do form a brown sort of hard skin at the base now the only time you need to worry is if that base was soft and squashy and it was rotting and then you'd have to do, sometimes the cactus really can't be saved. But this case, that is perfectly hard and it's just a normal part of the, of the cactus ageing. And um, do go and check a video out, links up above to a video I've made on natural corkiness on cacti and what it looks like. And that will show you, if you're a bit unsure whether you have, your cactus is going brown at the base and you're not sure whether it's just an old natural corkiness or whether it's rotting, do check that video out because a lot of the time people panic, think their cactus is rotting and it's just natural age. And you usually know if it's rot because it, the plant will be gone in days anyway. So um, that could be helpful. This is a perfect example of natural corkiness. It might not be the prettiest, but that's an old plant. That's how it goes. And um, that's this big tuber there. Now I want to sort of do, the less I do to the roots, the better in this case. The soil is a little bit damp, which ideally I don't like. Um, I don't like to pot a cactus on when it's still in damp soil. So I'm just going to be very careful with taking this off. I'm going to be putting it, potting it up into completely dry soil anyway. And because it's sort of getting later in the year now, if it's growing, growing season, I'm sort of glad that I'm taking this soil off because it would take a long time to dry out now. At this, the nights are getting quite cool, so this is far better that I do remove a lot of this old soil off. Nothing particularly wrong with it, but it's just a bit, bit um, you know, late in the year, like I say. And I'm probably going to be putting this in the same pot because it doesn't need to be repotted into a bigger pot. It just needs the soil changing. And sometimes with my cacti, you know, people say how to know when to repot a cactus, but I've also made a video on that, how to know. And one of the things is it's not always down to um, when the roots are coming through the pot, or that's the most obvious one. Sometimes the plant might not seem to be showing any signs of growing and it's looking a bit yellow, even if you're feeding it. And that's often the best time is just to repot it into completely fresh soil. It just needs a repot, even if it's going back in the same pot as in this one. This is going to go back into the same pot, but it's going to be going in dry soil, fresh soil. Look at that tuber root, guys. Isn't that amazing, thick, tuberous root? This is what Lophophora looks like. And I will show you more of the tuberous root, but I really don't want to disturb the soil because the soil on this, so not the soil, the roots, the, the soil on the roots, I should say. If I was to start taking more of the soil away, it would disturb the roots. And as I say, it's late in the year for me for repotting. So I'd rather not um, do that. When I repot again, probably next year, earlier in the year, I'll show you what the whole root ball looks like and the actual tuberous root. But I hope you get a bit of an idea there. It's almost like a big, uh, how a potato will be with its tuber. Now this is the fresh soil. 
all in here. So this is nice dry soil. And um, scooping all that in, I've made a lot more soil here in the container. <clears throat> so that's all the fresh, fresh stuff there too. And um, Lophophora especially, I mean all desert type of cacti, but especially Lophophora like a really well draining cactus mix because they, as I say, they do have tuberous roots, so they're very rot prone um, in this case. I'm going to put that back in here. But it's got a great root system, so I'm very happy with that. And all the fresh soil in here. And, uh, wonderful. You just want to make sure you get all that soil along the sides, in the sides there. As I say, I'm going to be keeping this totally dry now, completely dry all through the winter. As I say, this plant is still growing. They're still like cacti, like people say, when do you stop watering cacti? Well, I would always say, it really depends on so many different things. Like when it comes to overwintering your, your plants, you want to make sure if you're overwintering them cool and dry, which is what I recommend for the desert cacti now, um, you want to make sure the soil is totally dry in the pots if you're keeping them overwintering them in a cool temperature. This is going to be overwintered in our polytunnel at about five to seven Celsius, which is cold, um, but not obviously it's frost free. And um, this will encourage them to go winter dormant and then produce flowers in the spring. And obviously if it, we do have a heater, we keep the plants dry. We don't water any of them. Maybe some of the epiphyllums if they show signs of shriveling, but that's about it. And that's that one. So that's, that's really it. That's that one done. And I say a good tip is just to tap the sides to make sure all that loose soil goes down the sides there. And you don't want to press too hard because you don't want the roots to be compacted. But that's a good enough. I hope, I hope that um, gives you a bit of an idea. As I say, I've done videos on how to repot a cactus, but uh, in this case, I just want to show you this love force. So that's the first one done. And um, just put that there. And now the second one, exactly the same procedure. I'll just check the... Um, uh, the camera is on there so you get a good a good view yep i'm going to just stop that a minute now just stop i had to restart the camera again because it switches off after about 13 or 14 minutes so um i'll try and keep this quick now this one is the same procedure again so what i'm going to do is i've showed you how to repot that one this is going to be exactly the same thing and um i'm just going to squeeze this out the pot and then i'm going to show you what it looks like when i've potted this one up too just try and uh, loosen up the pot. <laughs> but otherwise it's going to be a very long video and it might bore you all. So um, let's loosen it up and then I'm going to stop the video. Oop. <laughs> and uh, same procedure again. Loosen up that soil. As I say, the old soil put away. Lovely big tuber there on this one as well. And always check underneath that there's no signs of pests, mealybugs or anything like that and as, as I've said, already said there that's nothing to worry about that's natural corkiness on an old cactus signs of a good old cactus that one <laughs> and um, just going to loosen up the, the roots and I'm going to show you what it looks like when I've loosened up all the soil off the roots now that's this all uh, all took out now I'm not going to take any more of the soil off the roots because as you can see there it's pretty much good, good root system, very good um, tuber there. And because the soil is still damp, I wouldn't normally recommend actually doing this when the soil is damp. But as I say, I want to dry the soil out before the winter kicks in. So I'm going to be putting this into dry soil, keeping that exactly as it is. That's the pot there. And um, dry soil, new soil, gently placing that in there. And um, the reason why I wouldn't usually recommend putting, using it, repotting um, a plant when it is in damp soil is because it's more likely to cause root problems and things like that. As in this case, I'm going to be keeping this completely dry, so there should not be any issues here. Um, and uh, the soil in around the pot. I'm not going to be giving this a scrap of water now until the um, until the spring time. So it's going to be have plenty of time just to settle into its new pot over the winter. As I say, the pot's a bit cracked there, not the most attractive of pots. <laughs> and that's it. You just want to make sure it's tapped in there, like that. Gently tucked in around its pot. And there you go. It's going to be kept nice and dry now until the springtime. I'll just show you the two together. That's the other one. So. 
again, put back in exactly the same pot, but I've used fresh soil on them. So it's giving a bit of a fresh, a freshen up. And um, also it means that it's helped to dry out any damp soil in there as well. So guys, I'm gonna turn it around so you can see, so you can see me. <laughs> I hope you, hope you enjoyed the video guys. And I wanna send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power. As always, from across the Emerald Isle. And until the next video, bye. 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 Bye.